space station. You see how fast it's moving? Yeah. See if I can zoom in on it a little bit. I see a little dot. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Man, it's moving really fast. Yeah, but that... You see how fast it's moving? Yeah. Yes, I wanted this image. I saw it on Twitter. This is such a great image. Okay, that's what we just got. That was the best one right there. That's so cool, right? USSR flag and cosmonaut and American flag and astronaut. Whether you just want to watch the ISS fly overhead at night or take time-lapse photography of it, or maybe even listen to the astronauts and cosmonauts talk to schools over ham radio or receive the images they send over ham radio, you need to know how to track it. And this is how you can do it with heavensabove.com. So obviously, first of all, go to heavensabove.com, heavens-above.com. By default, you're not gonna have a location set, so you're gonna wanna click under configuration, change your observing location. And then you can just search for the location. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. And then you can see it uses the postal center of Raleigh, North Carolina. You can move the pin closer to where you live. And I think I live over here. <laughs> I actually live near Cary and Crossroads. So we're gonna go with that. And then we can save the name to Raleigh Video for our purposes. So now you have a location set. You can see it here in the top right. You can see the coordinates if you want. You can see the time. Make sure you have the right time zone set and it matches with the time that you believe it is. And now we can just click on ISS under satellites and it'll take us to the passes. By default Heavens Above actually only shows the visible passes because that's pretty cool and people are interested in that when they first get involved. That's the easiest way to get involved with the International Space Station is to just watch it overhead. But for me I'm actually doing ham radio activities so I'm going to click all passes and I want to see when the next pass is. And you can see today is August 3rd, so it's actually about 523 right now, or 1723. No passes until 1739. Um, you can actually get some information about the pass just here in this table. You can see the start of the pass, the time, um, the altitude, the azimuth, and you can see the same for the highest point or max elevation and the end point. And notice that it shows 10 degrees here. Uh, if you're a ham radio operator, you want to know exactly when it comes over the horizon because you don't care. Uh, for example, if you're viewing the ISS, you probably can't see it below 10 degrees because of the horizon, things that are on the horizon, trees, etc. But ham radio, you can receive the signals even if you can't see the light bouncing off of it. So I'm going to click anywhere in this uh, table on this line, rather on this line, and it's going to take me to the full details of the pass. Here you can see what it would look like as it goes through the night sky. If it were visible, this would be useful to us. Since it's not, it's not useful. But this table down here is very useful. So it actually shows at zero degrees when it'll be uh, coming over the horizon. And that's 1736. And then you can see the max elevation is 18 degrees. And that's zero degrees above the um, horizon, of course. And you can see the cardinal direction south-southwest, um, max elevation southeast. Uh, going away it'll be east northeast and for me I use the actual the numbers here um, the specific degrees because I have a compass and that way I can find out exactly where it's coming from and know where to aim my antenna so that's pretty much all you need to do to use heavensabove.com to track the ISS there are other features for example uh, let's say you want to look up another satellite you can go to under satellites you can just click satellite database right here and you can search for SO50, for example. This is a very popular amateur radio satellite. If you get into satellites for the first time, you'll probably use this one because it's easy to work. It's easy to get into. It's easy to communicate through. So on this uh, section over here on the table, you can click All Passes. And you can see when the next good pass is. I usually look for the max elevation that I want. 90 degrees, that's pretty high. That's literally directly overhead. That's pretty cool. So it's 6.30 in the morning tomorrow it is going to be directly overhead and you can see the it'll be you just have to look straight up in the sky 
or another feature of Heavens Above, which is nice, is it shows you a ground track. And you can see it's going right overhead. And the same is true for the ISS as far as the ground track. Let's see the ground track for this upcoming pass. You can see it's over the Atlantic Ocean. So southeast when it comes, I'm sorry, south when it first comes into view, southeast when it's max elevation, roughly north to the northeast when it's going away. Now you can also log in or you can create an account and then you can store lots of different locations because obviously with this location here, it's just set as a cookie on the web browser. So if you go on another browser and try to log in and use your location, it will not be there. It'll show unspecified as it did in the beginning of the video. And now you can see I have lots of locations available here. And I can go and, and look at the details of all of them. I can edit them if I want. And I use this other stuff. So for example, if the ISS is going to be contacting a school in Maryland, for example, I can see exactly when their pass starts um, and when it ends and compare it to mine and see how my pass overlaps with their pass. So I can see when I'll be able to receive, uh, you know, how much of the pass I'll be able to receive. So. So it won't be full, it won't be the full amount of time that they have because I'm not in the same location. So like if it comes from the north and it hits a school in the north, they're gonna get the beginning of the pass and I won't be able to get the beginning of that part of the pass. So that, that pretty much covers it. Um, this is all the stuff you can do with Heavens Above um, that I wanted to cover in this video anyway. And you can also see Iridium flares, for example, which are really cool, they're really bright. One thing to mention is magnitude is uh, lower is better and it's a logarithmic scale so negative 3 is not just two uh, points below 5.3 it's it's much greater because the scale really goes up fast it's not a linear scale okay I'm gonna go and listen to the ISS digipeter uh, they have a ham radio data repeater so you send data to it and it repeats it and then using that you can communicate with other hams through it I'm just gonna listen I'm not gonna be trying to communicate with anybody but it'll still be pretty cool to see that we can track it with heavensabove.com and then we can receive it. Oh yeah. So you know, look, it's better. It's, it's coming from over here. This is southeast. It's about max elevation, I think. Maybe a little bit. There it is again. There it was again. We got three or four packets so far. So the way this works is people send a packet and it's just a little bit of information like a text message it has their coordinates and we can see where they are located and somebody could respond and you can have a little conversation. Well, you can make a contact which is just to exchange call signs and maybe um, a little bit more information. So there's not a lot to it. And uh, I don't have a way to decode this on this radio. You have to hook it up to another device to do that or have the radio that has that, uh, that other device built in. The device is called a TNC. And I think it's cool that you can pick this up with a simple handheld radio with a simple antenna. You don't need a high gain directional antenna like the Aero 2 satellite antenna I normally use in my videos. Uh, just this is an old radio from 1998 and it still works. And there are cheaper Chinese radios now. This is a Japanese radio. They're cheaper Chinese radios that you can get for about $30 on Amazon.com that could pick this up too. So you too, even if you don't have a ham radio license or anything like that, you could get a little handheld radio from Amazon called a Baofeng for $30 and receive radio signals from the International Space Station, which I think is pretty cool. Thanks for watching again. This is John Breyer, KG4AKV 73. This is the equipment that I use to listen to the International Space Station. Kingwood THD72. Okay, this is the uh, Aero 2. It's my recorder, my audio recorder. This is the radio I actually use to listen to the International Space Station. Greetings from International Space Station. Welcome on board.